What's up guys, we're back with a new educational video and this week we are talking about a new human randomized control trial demonstrating long-term benefits to resistance training even after stopping in elderly people. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment for the algorithm. So this is a really cool study out of Denmark called the LISA, I think it's called, L-I-S-A. And they were looking at comparing either people who were above the age of 65. So I think it said a year after retirement. So most of these people when they started were like 66 or 67. And they looked at comparing heavy resistance training over the course of one year or moderate intensity training or having people just do what they've been doing, but encouraging them to stay active. And looked at the benefits of those different protocols over a year, but then this new study is looking at a four year follow-up, meaning three years after the intervention was done, they looked to see what had happened. So let's talk about the groups. Now, these were actually on average pretty active older people. So they were averaging around 9,500 steps per day, which is pretty high, but there was a lot of variance in their daily steps and over 80% of them had at least one age-associated disease. This was a relatively healthy population for their age, but they still had age-related problems, as you would expect. The moderate intensity group was using body weight and resistance bands, and they were closer to like 50 to 60% of a one rep max for like 10 to 18 repetitions. And the moderate intensity group uh, worked out one time in-house in like, with the researchers, and two times on their own at home per week. The heavy resistance training group did three days a week of machine-based training at 70 to 85% of a one rep max doing six to 12 repetitions per set. And so, you know, typically what you would recommend for a resistance training program to basically be intense enough to get results. The control group just was encouraged to keep doing what they've been doing. They were encouraged to be active. Uh, they were encouraged to go participate in different social events and whatnot, but they were not instructed to resistance train in any way, shape, or form. Now, after a year, they found about what you would expect. The heavy resistance training group got the best results pretty much across the board. More lean mass, more strength, more isometric strength, and more cross-sectional area in their muscle fibers. And there were some other benefits as well. Whereas the modern intensity group got benefits, they got stronger, uh, they got more lean mass, but not as much as the heavy resistance training group. And in fact, statistically, the moderate intensity group didn't really increase their strength, but they also didn't have a decline during that year, which again, after age 65, actually after age 40, if you don't resistance train, you tend to start to see declines in strength over time. Now, what's interesting is their dropouts, either at one year or four years, were associated with people with lower physical activity, higher BMI and higher body fat mass. I mean, kind of makes sense. Uh, people who have been less active are more likely to stay less active and they're probably less likely to continue to do follow-ups, especially if they haven't been doing so hot. What's really interesting is all the groups declined from the one year mark. So after one year of doing this stuff, all the groups who stopped doing it declined. The heavy resistance training group did not decline as much with pretty much anything. In fact, there was really no differences from them at baseline to four years, which when you consider over the course of four years, both the other groups, the moderate intensity group and the control group, they lost strength, they lost lean mass, they lost cross-sectional area compared to baseline. The heavy resistance training group still maintained for four years. Now, if you look at the graphs and how they kind of go, I mean, you could say, well, it looks like they're declining at kind of the same rate after the peak of one year, which may be true, but the point is by having a higher threshold to start with, it still lasts them longer. Even though they only resistance trained for one year, three years after they stopped, they still had better results than these other groups. Now, some people might be of the opinion, of, well, maybe they'll all just go back to baseline, but at least from this four year data set, it looks like even heavy resistance training for a year still has benefits for strength, even lean mass down the road. Again, 
they declined and they weren't different from baseline, but when you consider that the other groups, the moderate intensity group and the control group were now below baseline, it's actually quite a big benefit to be able to stave off the loss of muscle. And again, three days a week, going back to some of the stuff we've been saying for a while now, it takes an embarrassingly low amount of time and energy to get a ton of benefits from resistance training. I mean, think about the study we covered looking at huge effects on depression with just 50 minutes of resistance training total per week. It doesn't take much to get the benefits and people still don't do it. And I, I don't know if it's because they believe that they can't get stronger after a certain age or if there's just a mental block or whatever it is. You can get stronger at any age. If your nervous system works, if your spinal cord is intact, you can get stronger. You can gain muscle. And there is no age at which that is not the case. Now, if you start at 80 years old, are you gonna look like a 25 year old bodybuilder? No, that ship has probably sailed. But you can get more lean mass, you can get more strength, and you can improve the quality of your life immeasurably and probably still improve your lifespan. The perfect time to start is right now. It is right now. If you're 40, perfect, great time to start. If you're 50, great time to start. If you're 60, great time, doesn't matter. It is the time to start. And they also showed that there is a, tends to be an increase in visceral fat over time. Well, resistance training for one year attenuated the rise in visceral fat even four years later. You don't need to do two hours a day, five days a week to get benefits. A couple of days a week, two or three days a week for 30 to 60 minutes will make huge differences. But what the study shows is to get the benefits, you do have to push yourself. Just using the little baby weights is fine when you start if that's all you can do and that takes you close to fatigue. But over time, you have to progressively overload. You have to go heavy, heavy as a relative term relative to your starting level of strength. But you've got to push yourself and you've got to deal with a little bit of discomfort. But those hours of discomfort will save you years of discomfort and disease when you get older. This is just like investing. Putting in 10 grand real early can net out over a million bucks over the course of 30, 40 years. If you start later, you got to put in more later in order to get the benefits. But you can still get a huge return on your investment, but you gotta put in the time and the best time to start is now. And if you're not sure where to start, make sure you check out the BioLane Workout Builder. We take all the messy guesswork out of the reps, the sets, the intensity, but we leave it flexible enough for you to choose exercises that you prefer and have access to. And we even have programs for people who train at home with minimal equipment. So make sure you click the link in the description and check it out, and I'll catch you guys next week.